Dr. Sridhar Krishna Swami is editor in chief of New India Abroad and India Abroad. He has been an active journalist with more than 3 decades of experience. In this conversation with Lalit Kejha, Dr. Sridhar discusses the import and ramifications of the indictment of former US President Donald Trump by a Manhattan grand jury. This is an India Abroad video. Uh, good afternoon Dr. Sridhar, welcome to this New India Abroad podcast. Uh, let's start with the most important thing of this week. And I would like to start with asking the first question. What are the legal battles the former U.S. President Donald Trump is facing? Well, thank you for having me on your show. Um, it's a pleasure being here. Uh, the legal battles of Mr. Donald Trump are nothing new either to him or to the people who have been watching his political career in the United States. Currently, uh, he has been indicted uh, by a grand jury uh, sitting in uh, New York uh, State, uh, New York City on uh, charges, on several charges apparently uh, that will only be unsealed anytime today, tomorrow, but he is going to be arraigned uh, presumably on Tuesday morning at a, before a judge in Manhattan. <laughs> Uh, that is where the proceedings are to be taking place and uh, right now the beauty of the whole thing is that no one knows and yet everyone talks as if they are knowing a lot i don't know to be very honest with you what is in the indictment i don't know um if you know kindly let me know uh, but uh, right now the indictment is sealed uh, that means it will it could be unsealed anytime or it could be unsealed in front of the judge and uh, the charges will be read out to Mr. Trump. Uh, many believe that uh, these charges could be serious. It need not just be a misdemeanor. It could be a felony uh, leading to criminal prosecution of the president, former president. Uh, Dr. Sridhar, you have been a long-term correspondent of the Hindu at the PTI in Washington, D.C. for around 14 years before you move into academics. Now you are visiting here. Uh, as you covered the U.S. judicial and legal system for a long time, can you give us an insight to our viewers and listeners? Uh, what, how does, it how does it function, the U.S. judicial system? He's in mar lago right now. The court cases are happening in New York. What's going to happen on Tuesday? Is he flying from New York, from Mar-a-Lago, Florida to New York? Or Yeah, um, see, by now, the lawyers for Mr. Trump and the federal prosecutors in Manhattan and the law enforcement authorities in Manhattan uh, would have been talking to one another to see uh, what the modalities, what the logistics uh, I heard, uh, just as how you have been hearing uh, from media, uh, you know, reports uh, from television media, print media, the internet, whatever it is, uh, that Mr. Trump is likely to come to New York on Monday evening. Um, he'll probably, he must be having an apartment still at the Trump Tower. And then on Tuesday morning, sometime at an undisclosed time yet, uh, he will be quietly taken before a judge. Now, now let's make this one thing very clear. Uh, you may like Mr. Trump, you may not like him. But the fact is that he is still a former president of the United States. And uh, he is entitled to secret service protection till he dies. Unless he himself voluntarily and in written gives it away, which so far he has not. So uh, you are expecting the Secret Service of the United States to be fully in the loop. Uh, this is not a local law enforcement uh, that is going to be there out in New York City on Tuesday morning when he's supposed to be arraigned. Uh, neither is it going to simply confine uh, to the U.S. Uh, marshals uh, who, will, will, who will also be involved in you know, accompanying Mr. Trump. Um, and then there are some small, you know, procedures that uh, that are uh, in place. Uh, that is for commoners. But don't forget, he is a former president. I don't expect him to be handcuffed. Um, I don't expect him to be handcuffed. Uh, but 
they will go through the other procedures like taking a picture of him mug shot as what they call here and you can bet a dollar to a donut that uh, mr trump will plead not guilty and uh, he's a kind of a person uh, and his lawyers and his legal team and his advisors um, um, on the record or off the record have made it very clear that uh, he is not about to wilt and succumb to pressure um, he will not because mr trump is not known to be a person who is weak or who shows that he is scared so he will face whatever he is going to face and they will lead out uh, i mean they will read out the list of charges and then from there it goes they say it is close to 30 or 30 plus we have to see no one knows i'm repeating it again yeah if if i if you put up your hat of academics you taught students for about more than a decade uh, what is the historical uh, significance of this has this thing happened in the past ever in the american history no in the past 230 years plus um, it has never happened it's the first time a sitting or a former president is ever being indicted although you can argue that um, uh, a few others came very close uh, richard nixon came very close um, president bill clinton they say came close to being indicted but none of those things in you know, happened so this is the first time in more than two centuries uh, first time since the uh, the american political system has been in existent existence that uh, you are having a scenario like this uh and this is really a scenario because and there are a whole list of uh, you know legal issues um that will keep this thing going for a very long time and first of which being <laughs> whether some of the charges that they are bringing against mr trump uh, have outlived the, the judicial um, bar like uh, the statute of limitations um some people say it's 5 years some people say it is 7 years and then some people say that the governor of new york had already exempted the statute of limitations during the uh, period of the covid so all these things are in legal play there is some of the charges uh, even merit the time frame in which uh, they are being prosecuted uh you know next year we have elections presidential elections in this country uh former president trump has already announced that he is running for presidency and the two other candidates and both of them are indian american origin can can you give us an insight into the impact this legal battle of president trump is going to have on the republican presidential seat yeah it's a, it's a very good question um you 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 have covered um, american politics for as long as i have known you um mr trump doesn't do anything that is not for mr trump so he is going to take this uh, indictment this circus environment if it turns out to be one and play it fully to his advantage uh see already you have to understand that um in a poll of uh, presidential candidates in the republican party mr trump has got 70% backing and uh, that is only 70% of a list that is slowly only unfolding uh as of now you have of the sure people who have announced mr mr h hutchinson announced today on a sunday that he is running is a former governor of arkansas former congressman and then you have two indian americans uh, nikki haley a former governor of south carolina and then you have a business uh, tycoon uh, mr vivek ramasamy um and then 
there are there there are a number of other people who could also mm-hmm. run uh, like the governor of florida a senator of florida um and then you are having uh, the former vice president um, mr pens and then you're talking about the former secretary of state mike pompeo you know you have all these people but no one until this time has come anywhere close to the kind of support level that mr trump has so the party elders um, will be taking stock they will first see how this event unfolds on tuesday uh, and then from there on you will see the flow of events and its general impact on the presidential election next year I, general, I, uh, we are all assuming that pre- uh, the incumbent president joseph biden is going to run but we don't know uh, he said he will let us know and lot of people um, are um, are anxiously waiting if mr president biden runs i don't think there will be a, se- a serious challenge uh, within the democratic party traditionally um, an incumbent does not get challenged within his own party but that is traditional uh, these days nothing can be said for sure but if mr biden is not running uh, then the field is wide open very wide open indeed and you're going to see some of the familiar names you're going to see some of the non familiar names as well who are going to be throwing their hats in the ring but um, i'll tell you one thing um, this will be a very interesting election cycle 2024 2020 uh, according to mr trump is still not over uh, because he continues telling that he won and he was cheated and we are into another election 2024 now if he runs and he wins that's one story if he wins uh, if he runs and he loses and then comes back to his 2020 slogan that is another story um you can't be cheated twice and he knows that apparently privately uh, the um, some of mr trump's own closest advisors are saying that uh, he has quietly resigned to the fact long long time back that uh, he in fact uh, had lost the election in 2020 but we have to wait out uh, we have to politics is something um you know that is very very fluid uh, at this uh, you know at this point of time and uh, we still have a very vigorous campaigning left within the republican party we still have to see whether any of the republican candidates have the guts to take on mr trump uh in the, in the last uh, 3 4 days since the time of the announce uh, since the time of announcing the indictment you have only seen people coming out in support of mr trump but at the same time apparently they are also sending out you know notices for themselves asking for uh, you know campaign contributions and um, apparently mr trump himself in a span of 24 hours made 4 million dollars now i don't know i didn't count that money but i'm just i'm just going by media reports um just after just one day um, within a period of one day after the announcement of his indictment you know he puts out his appeal and then you know 4 million you know dollars are supposed to have come in so this is something you know that um, uh, you know you'll have to watch out for and uh, don't forget uh, this indictment of president trump is on is an account of business fraud it has nothing to do with politics so far it's on some hush money payment he made to someone 
uh, out of his business account, which is illegal apparently in the state of New York. Um, now they still, I don't know, maybe when you, when they open the indictments, they may tell you if there is another angle to it from this hush money, uh, you know, hush money payments and violation of campaign finance laws. Now, that is political. But right now we are only dealing with apparently business type frauds. And um, I, I listened to some of the talk shows today. Uh, at least one gentleman was making the point that uh, these are so minor that uh, normally people won't even pursue it. But we don't know. We don't know. We have to see.